Vertically curved members in building structures are designed for combined axial compression and in-plane flexural loads. Although the effect of curvature on the lateral torsional buckling strength is significant, the provisions for yielding and local buckling in AISC specifications chapters B and F can be used without modification for most curved members in buildings. This video discusses conditions where the AISC specification provisions may not be applicable. In a simply supported straight beam, when conducting a first order analysis, the moment is evaluated by checking for equilibrium in the undeformed geometry, and the moment is evaluated as follows. When conducting a second order analysis, the moment is evaluated by checking for equilibrium in the deformed geometry, and the moment is evaluated as follows. In curved members, second order moments can be calculated either by using a second order analysis or by amplifying the moments from a first order analysis. The amplification factors in AISC specification Appendix 8 for straight members are also accurate for curved members. The required in-plane flexural strength based on the amplified first order moment is calculated as follows. Where MI1 is the first order moment about the axis of curvature causing in-plane flexure and bi is the amplification factor calculated using the following equation where pr is the required axial strength and pei is the elastic in-plane critical buckling load which we calculated in the previous video linked at the top and in the description below flexure in the plane of curvature can cause member instability with a buckled shape characterized by out-of-plane translation and twisting. For closing moments, MIC, which are moments that induce compression at the inner flange, the buckling strength is greater than that of an equivalent straight member. For members with opening moments, MIO, which are moments that induce compression at the outer flange, the buckling strength is less than that of an equivalent straight member. For doubly symmetric members with equal end moments, the elastic critical lateral torsional buckling moment is calculated as follows. Where LDB is the developed arc length along the arc between points that are either braced against lateral displacement of the compression flange or braced against twist of the cross section. And CY and CZ are calculated as follows. The positive root in the equation is for closing moments and the negative root is for opening moments. In practice, most curved members are braced against lateral torsional buckling by continuous or discrete bracing systems. In the case of discrete braces, each segment can buckle between brace points. The buckling strength is dependent on the developed length along the member between braces LDB. The lateral torsional buckling provisions in AISC specification chapter F can be used with the lateral torsional buckling modification factor CB, revised to consider the effects of curvature. The revised lateral torsional buckling modification factor CBI is determined as follows, where CA is the following, and CBS is the lateral torsional buckling modification factor for an equivalent straight member. And MES is the elastic critical lateral torsional buckling moment of the equivalent straight member subjected to a uniform moment with a length equal to LDB. For parabolically curved doubly symmetric members with HB over LSB less than or equal to 0.2, the lateral torsional buckling strength is similar to that of circularly curved members. An equivalent radius RE for use with the previously shown equations can be calculated with this equation. Although this method is accurate only when HB over LSB is less than or equal to 0.2, it can be used to provide a conservative estimate of the flexural strength of members with opening moments when HB over LSB is greater than 0 
for members with closing moments and HB over LSB greater than 0.2, the equivalent radius method is unconservative, but a conservative estimate of the member strength can be calculated using the equivalent straight member with a length equal to LDB. The strength of curved members under the actions of combined axial and flexural loads can be calculated with AISC specification chapter H. The required in-plane flexural strength MRI should be based on a second order analysis or an amplified first order moment as discussed. Member strength should be verified at each unbraced segment along the length. Because the axial load can vary along the member, careful selection of the proper axial load ratio PR over PC is essential. For in-plane buckling, there is only one axial load ratio for the arc, which is calculated with the required axial load PR equal to the maximum axial load within the arc. For out-of-plane buckling, both the required load and the available load PC can vary between unbraced segments within a curved member. The governing axial load ratio for each arc segment is the maximum of the out-of-plane axial load ratio for that segment and the in-plane axial load ratio for the entire arc. Both the in-plane and out-of-plane buckling strength calculations were discussed in the previous video. When curved members are subjected to in-plane flexure, the flexural strength and stiffness can be affected by cross-sectional distortion. For the I-shaped member shown, which is subjected to strong axis in-plane flexure, the flange forces F sub F are shown. To maintain equilibrium of the curved flanges, radial forces at the web to flange interfaces are required. Because the inner radius is smaller than that of the outer radius, the radial force at the inner flange QI is larger than the radial force at the outer flange QO. However, using the centroidal radius R at both flanges will usually provide sufficient accuracy. In this case, the radial force per unit length is the moment about the axis of curvature divided by the radius of the curve multiplied by the total depth of the I-beam minus the thickness of the flanges. The radial flange force components can cause local bending of the flanges and local buckling of the web. The radial load effects are similar for other members with flat cross-sectional elements. For round hollow sections, radial forces can cause ovalization, reducing the strength and stiffness. For unstiffened elements, the design model is shown, where the radial uniform force per unit area, sigma, acts transverse to the flange. The figure on the right shows the moment diagram for half of the flange, where WF is the force per unit length and L is the cantilever beam length. The maximum moment per unit length at the fixed end of the beam is the longitudinal flexural stress in the beam multiplied by the thickness of the flange and the length squared divided by two times the radius of curvature. The fixed end of the cantilever is at the face of the web and L is equal to B. The nominal flexural strength per unit length is evaluated as follows, with Fy being the yield strength of the member and Ku is a reduction factor that accounts for the effect of the longitudinal flexural stresses caused by the member moment about the axis of curvature. The strength has to be multiplied by a reduction factor 0.9. The design model for stiffened elements is shown. For hollow steel section flanges and other cases where the element is continuous at the edges, the local flange moment can be calculated with a fixed end beam model as shown. Assuming the flange spans between the web center lines, L is the width B minus the thickness of the webs. The nominal flexural strength per unit length is very similar to that of unstiffened elements but with a change in the modification factor. For closing moments that induce compression at the inner flange, the radial components of the flange forces cause compression in the web. For members with small radius bends and thin webs, these loads can cause web bend buckling. 
The nominal in-plane flexural strength for the web bend buckling limit state is evaluated as follows. It is then reduced by the reduction factor phi and compared to the required closing bending moment. Flexural deformation cause ovalization in both straight and curved round hollow steel section members, causing a decrease in strength and stiffness and localized stresses in the circumferential hoop direction. Ovalization also causes a deviation from the longitudinal linear elastic stress distribution assumed in elementary bending theory. The major axis of the ovalized shape is in the plane of the curvature for opening moments MIO and the minor axis is in the plane of curvature for closing moments MIC. The flexural section properties are functions of the flexibility characteristic CR which is defined as follows. Because significant nonlinear ovalization can occur when the member is loaded beyond the effective yield moment MYI, limiting the nominal flexural strength to MYI may be appropriate. The following effective parameters should be used with AISC specification section F8 to account for the ovalization. To know how to use section F8 of the AISC specification, please click on the link at the top right corner or in the description below. When fatigue or local strength is an issue, the circumferential stresses can be calculated with a multiplier on the longitudinal flexural stress. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.